Hey, hey, hey. Ty for another Out of This World story from Our Space. Why are some of us suckers for pain? What do we think is going to happen when we get too close to a flame or stick a fork in a toaster? Today in Our Space, we have to slot some sense into people. Up first, a cheater whose eyes are fixated on everyone but their own partner. X brought up doing therapy on their own in an attempt to reconcile after I blocked and went no contact. I had to make a new account because I'm suspicious that my ex has found my alternate account that I have posted on here with, which makes my decision to reconcile more complicated. TLDR, I have been cheated on in two other relationships and X knew this. X damn letter tender looked up hookers while I was out of town. Once I found out, I left and I have to go on no contact for one month and blocked him off everything. I'm in therapy and this month has been hard but one of the best in my life. My ex has tried every way to reach me and said he has put himself in therapy and has made many realizations, wants us to be in couples therapy, and wants to be with me. I am weighing out if it's worth it, and if it is just fluff or real action because I'm afraid he knows my old account and is just telling me what I want to hear. I mentioned therapy a lot on that account. I'm worried by contacting him it will reset my progress and ruin what I have accomplished so far and give him all the power. Long story short, I'm a 25 female, he is male 30, and has a daughter who is female 12. I met him a little over a year ago, August 2021, and we started off casual. We both got along really well and feelings developed. I asked him if we would move forward and he said he still needed time to be casual. I appreciated the honesty and started seeing other people and he became jealous, but still had cold feet committing and only decided to commit once someone I was seeing wanted to be exclusive with me. This August, 2022, he got a temporary job opportunity in another city and asked me to move with him, to which I was hesitant but agreed. His daughter would not be able to come as she was in school, so it was a unique opportunity to try living together. I cooked, cleaned, did laundry, made him snacks, went down on him every day, even twice a day sometimes in addition to sex. I always gave him time when he got home from work to decompress, and I always tried to give him understanding as he works 13-hour days. He was paying for mostly everything financially, so I thought it was fair that I helped him out and made his life easier. I was out of town for four days about in September 2022. On the night before I was supposed to get back, he pulled a prank on me saying he was at the strip club, and I got extremely mad and ignored him for 4 hours, 12 a.m. to 4 a.m. When he picked me up, as we were grocery shopping, he mentioned looking up hookers over the weekend. He's very upfront with me about women he finds attractive on Instagram, models, etc., as in he actually shows me, so him bringing up hookers surprised me, but after I played it off as him being honest with me and he reassured me, he just looked and didn't do anything. We had been fighting a lot about how I think he is hiding a relationship and trying to appear single, he had huge issues complimenting me, but could compliment random women, would ogle them in front of me, and show me Instagram OnlyFans models all the time, and only, like photos of women he knew that were provocative, bikini, selfie, etc. He also is still friends with his ex, and other women he had sexual relations with, which makes me uncomfortable. I had many honest, calm conversations about how this bothered me, but he did not change. I looked at his tablet when he was at work and it had his entire search history. I also looked through his email and found out the night he played the prank, he re-downloaded Tinder when I ignored him. He also had been searching a pookers the entire weekend like he had mentioned. The site was Leo List, and he revisited the same two ads, two different girls, over eight times. I confronted him and prefaced the question by asking him if I were to download Tinder, wouldn't that signal I'm not committed to the relationship? He said yes, so then I asked him why he downloaded it. He was taken aback, but came clean right away. I think I unfortunately did not cover my tracks clean enough because he saw me look at his phone in the middle of the night and the next day deleted his search history regarding the hookers. That's why his instant confession meant nothing to me. He already knew he was caught and thought that taking the honest route would save him. He told me he was not cheating and not bored of our relationship and simply wanted to see what kind of girls were out there and never had any intention of meeting or messaging anyone. I asked to see something on his phone and he refused to let me hold it and just told me to tell him what to click. Then, later, when I asked to see his phone again, he refused, and I believe I saw him trying to change his phone passcode. Checked his iPad, the next day, he had searched up how to delete his Snapchat history. I basically went instant no contact and flew back home. I have had him blocked and have not said a word to him for this past month. He has called me every day through his phone, his work phone, and other phone numbers, left me numerous text messages, and dropped off a letter to my house. This letter is where he admitted he is deeply sorry and takes responsibility for everything that happened how he was misguided during a relationship, and how he truly loves me and realizes he wants to be with me. I said nothing to this letter, and all these forms of communication he mentions he really wants to meet in person and get closer, and on bad days, he tries to make me feel bad for not talking to him and saying it's cruel. Recently, he told me he is sending one final message and said he is in therapy, has discovered a lot about himself and why he did what he did, and wants us to be in couples therapy and really try for our relationship. On my other account, 
I talk so much about how therapy has changed me and about how I hope that more wayward spouses can go to therapy on their own terms and discover why they did what they did and how to be better. I'm worried he has read this account and is playing into my hands by using therapy to get me to talk or get back together when he doesn't actually want to change. But I would be lying if I said I'm not happy in some ways. If he really did take his own initiative, isn't that a good sign? He has had traumatic things happen to him, which I know isn't an excuse, but I feel like this new therapy insight can give him a fresh start, and I guess a fresh start for our relationship, and which I really hope for. Let's see what the community thinks about this story. Hard Pass Yo says, This is a manipulation tactic. Reading this screams he's just not that into you. He just likes what you do for him. You were doing the most for him, and he had a great setup getting all that from you at home, and then doing whatever he wanted on the side. I don't think you're ever going to get the commitment you're looking for from this chump. He has got to try with all the women he found attractive, but then still go home to a hot meal and sex. Like, dang, of course he's going to do whatever he thinks he can do to keep this situation going for himself. If he thinks he wants therapy, then it should be for him and himself alone. Not to get you back. That is manipulation. Leave him on block and find someone who actually cherishes you, not what you do for them. The OP replies, yeah, I totally agree, so thank you. I just need the reality check because I feel like this past year has been me believing the manipulation off my sad delusional hope that he could change and we could be together. Cliche, I can change him, I know. The therapy piece threw me for a loop so that's why I have been reconsidering no contact, but I think what you're saying is extremely valid. XXSBH49 chimes in. So wait, why are you even thinking of getting back with a man like this? How can you call this a relationship? Why did you agree to moving in with him if he admired women in front of you but never complimented you? The fact that he keeps on eyeing women shows that he has terrible self-control that would need at least three years to fix. Do yourself a favor and never look back. Clench your jaw and be strong. You got this. I feel like you said it yourself, OP. This one has been one of the best. Yes, it's been hard, but why would you want to go back to something that was even harder? Stop pretending it'll be okay if you go back. If you have a feeling he's just playing you and feeding you what you want to hear, then that's exactly what he's doing. It's what they all do to try to get you back. So they can have someone who literally goes down on him every day and waits on them hand and foot. If your last month has been so much better without him, why would you want to go back to anything less? What do you think OP should do? Next, an OP asks how to go cold turkey. Has anyone regretted the decision to separate immediately? Advice. The question is directed at those who immediately separated or filed for divorce after becoming aware of infidelity. I'm just curious. Did any of you regret not attempting reconciliation? What went into your decision making? How long did you wait before you started the process? The lost soul in Florida responds, I think you will find far more people who regretted staying together than regretting divorce. And among the ones who divorced, the regret will be in having waited and not acknowledging the inevitable. I made up my mind about divorce about 30 seconds after finding out. My wife told me on D-Day she was pregnant with the affair barter's child. There could be no doubt because she had refused me any kind of intimate contact for months. The very first thing she said to me was, we could get past from a sake and raise our child together. There's only one answer to that. Bex, me high low says, I did both. Try to reconcile before I had any proof. File for divorce after getting proof and making one last ditch effort to reconcile. Then tried reconciling again during divorce. If anything, I wish I had filed for divorce at the first sign of an affair. I should never have tried to reconcile. I should have ran through a divorce, asking for full custody, zero dividend of assets. I should have gone full nuclear. Sorry if this doesn't apply to you. Usual Spring 6184 adds, I grieve for the marriage I thought I had, but not for her. The stranger I thought was my wife. I confronted her. She gaslighted me. I told her one more chance to tell the truth, or else she would never see me again. To the best of my knowledge, she has not seen me again. Twelve years married, no kids. Trace Player has one more thought. This is the biggest thing nobody seems to get their head around. You want to stay married to a person that only exists in your head. That person never existed, and probably the most awful discovery of all. I think the comments said it best. Nine times out of ten, you regret staying. You become so petty and full of guilt for not leaving. Why subject yourself to people who are willing to do that to you? That's not love. That's definitely not respect. We have to show people how to love, respect us, and treat us. And we do that by creating boundaries and treating ourselves the way we want others to treat us. Think of it this way. If you stick your hand in the fire, you learn it's hot and that burns you. You're not going to stick your hand in the fire again, right? What are your thoughts? Up next, a real family man. My husband is playing family with another woman and her kids. My, 32 female, husband, 33 male is playing family with another woman and her kids. We've been together for eight years, married for three. He is, for the most part, an amazing husband. He supports my goals and is financially able to take care of our little family of three. We have a dog. Even when I was laid off during COVID, he had a mishap back in the second year of dating, but there was not much hard evidence, and I learned to let it go and trust. But let's be real. It'll always be on the back burner. I've been cheated on in the past, and it's not easy for me. But I love him. 
He takes great care of his grandmother and my family. He treats them with respect, love, and is always polite. He loves to clean, wash, and make the bed. I cook at grocery shop. We have our own home, and I worked hard to finally make a comparable income to him so that we can look forward to getting a bigger home next year. Our intimacy aspect of the relationship has been lacking a lot ever since year two. Something's changed recently in our third year of marriage. He's a lot more aggressive when he talks, probably due to work. He's never aggressive to me and rarely argues with me, but seeing him speak with no sensitivity sometimes is a turn off. This was not how he was when I first met him. He's wanted children ever since we got married, and as much as I did too, I couldn't get past not wanting to be intimate because of these changes. Just last week though, I broke through and felt ready again after I sat him down to have a talk about his recent behaviors, which he worked to change. I went to the doctor to figure out how I need to prepare, and we tried baby making for the first time in five months. Three days later, I had a gut curiosity when I saw his laptop laying there when he wasn't home. I haven't checked his phone or laptop in years. I used to because I was insecure, and he had always given me access to it to prove his sincerity. But something wanted me to. I opened it up and found multiple love emails to another woman who was recently divorced and had two kids. He had passport applications open for the youngest kid and further research showed him looking into Disneyland packages for four. Edit. Yes, that woman knows that he is helping her kid with a passport renewal. And yes, she knows I exist. His Instagram has photos of us in the profile picture and throughout the account. He had to do lists that they check off. Movies, date ideas, restaurants, which extracurricular activities he wanted to enroll the kids in next year, etc. FYI, this is not his child. I looked at the passport application and found the biological father's information, which matched the last name of the kid. Due to our lack of intimacy and his inability to communicate, he hates talking things out, just like his grandpa. Combined with his want so badly to have children, he found someone who already had his head start and is playing father figure to them. His love notes to her state that he loves her, has never loved anyone this much, and more. I guess a few years of not nosing around in his stuff made him lower his guard. I confronted him, and he cried and admitted. He told me that he seeked intimacy, affection, and validation. All that I have not been giving him in the past, so many years. He recognized that it was his fault for not communicating with me. Sitting down with me, and properly talking to me, like when I do when I have an issue. He wants to work it out. He told me that there is no Disney trip or anything, but I know that their last encounter was two weeks ago at an Airbnb, when he told me he was working a graveyard shift. I don't know how to react, but I know that I am scared, nervous, and sad. Eight years of life, thrown away. We've built a home. I don't want to make rash decisions, but I don't know what kind of questions I should be asking myself and weighing to make good decisions for myself and him. I still love him, but am traumatized and hurt. What does it mean if I want to reconcile? What does it mean if I leave this? What am I to expect? The serious maximum 488 responds first. First, don't make a decision until your emotions settle down. Second, schedule an SCD STI test for both of you. Third, talk to a divorce lawyer to see what a divorce looks like for you. Look at your finances, and finally, look at the resources listed at the sub surviving infidelity. Best of luck. Typical agency 8984 adds, Only you can decide if you choose reconcile. Ask yourself these questions. Did he seem remorseful? Does he promise to cut contact with Fairbarter? Does a Fairbarter know about you? What did he do with the passport application? Is he willing to go to therapy? Did he tell you how long this has been going? How did it start? Further, save any proof. Demand open phone policy and computer access. Demand he call a Fairbarter and end it in front of you. Make him tell her that he's married and he cheated on you. He needs to tell her he's not leaving you and she was a mistake. How is this being paid for? Who is pay? Does he have any secret bank accounts? Make sure if he is serious, he gives you his passport. Make him cancel everything in front of you. Hotel, tickets, plane tickets, any reservations. Make sure you write down the card number of these cancellations. You say he canceled it, but I double verify plus check for any additional trips that may be scheduled. Considering he's planning a trip with her kids, he's serious about her and met them. This also tells me this isn't a new relationship. Please think over everything thoroughly. Hugs to you. The OP replies, thank you for this. Those questions, I know some answers. I think he will pay. There is no way she has enough money coming out of her divorce with two children. With her current employment, there's no way she makes enough to even get her own home in this expensive city, which is why the passport applications show she still lives with her ex-husband. I took photos of all the proof I can find. It kills me to look at them. He told me he met her at the gym in the beginning of the year. Some of these emails already started end of May. I thought about the open phone policy, deleting all social media apps on the phone, and access to all his email accounts. It seems so extreme, and makes me ask myself, if I have to go above and beyond like this to secure my sanity and mend my heart. But I think, if I didn't want to reconcile, these are definite steps I'm going to 100% take. We have one more reaction from Nona Organic. No kids need blame shifted? Run. Run as fast as you can. It seems innocent to say, I needed all these things I didn't get from you. But really what that means is he conditions his fidelity on you pleasing him. See how sneakily manipulative that is? Putting the onus on you? To be clear... He cheated because he's selfish and thought he was too smart to get caught and you not too smart enough to find out. 
you're young and your husband has been playing daddy to another woman's kids and spending your spouse some money on them and telling another woman he's never loved anyone as much as he loved her before. So, who's he lying to, her or you? How are you to trust that again when the biggest predictor of someone's future behavior is their past behavior? Has he even sent her no contact email yet? Has he written you out a timeline of the affair from beginning to end? That's where you start. Visit chumplady.com and survivinginfidelity.com and pick up the book, Cheating in a Nutshell. I'm really sorry this happened to you. You don't deserve this. You aren't to blame. How is he, for the most part, an amazing husband if he's cheated on you and it's on the back burner? If that's something that constantly at the back of your mind, then he's not an amazing husband and whatever he's doing to try to prove otherwise is an act. Everything you've said about him is farther from an amazing husband. It's like you're trying to cover up the fact that he's a piece of crap. Seems like he's already made his decision. Honestly, I feel like it really means you don't respect yourself enough to leave if you want to stay. Yes, it's scary to move on, but it's far more scarier to stay in a loveless, sexless relationship with someone who isn't willing to talk to you. If you can't talk, then crap won't get fixed. If he's playing house with some other family, time to move on, sweetheart. What do you think? And thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. We'd hate for you to miss out. But if you want to listen to more stories from me, check out our lounge where I feature a larger variety of non-cheating related stories. See you there.